Good evening. Now we are going to have a talk with Luciano Vecho, which in Spanish is something like Luciano Beautiful, <laughs> about <laughs> open S, <coughs> open S S uh, H debacle. Thank you, Luciano. <laughs> yeah, sorry for my English. <laughs> okay. Um, well, everybody knows why you are here. I mean, remember yesterday we see the problem related with open SSL. And now this BOF, it's what can we learn about this this debacle? Let's see. Uh, I have some notes. If you want to join me, this is the IP. Thank you. And let's go to this part of the talk. Yesterday, I will pass over it. Uh, we will try to see what happened here. The idea here is. I, I'm not a really Debian develop list reader. I mean, I have uh, things better to do in my t with my time. Uh, so, uh, but many people ask me uh, which are the the goals for Debian to fix this bug in the future, to fix this kind of issue in the future. So that's why uh, I propose DBOF, this BOF. But I, what I want to say is I have um, not really uh, deeply familiar with uh, with some that sure Rhonda. Um, yeah. um, your documentation seems to be firewalled. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, it's firewalled. Oh, it's working for him. You have the firewall, sorry. <laughs> the output firewall. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. Mm. So that's the part uh, which I usually said in this talk. Uh, uh, as uh, you can see it there, it's my point of view, but I would like to um, agree this point of view with you or most of you, it's impossible to really agree with all of you, of course, but with most of you. So <clears throat> when many people um, complain to Debian about this flow, uh, I show this these slices. In order to discuss uh, a better way to approach the, the problem, we should notice that Debian needs patches. Many people think that it's something wrong to patch software in the distribution, but that's what a distribution is. Uh, that's because sometimes uh, Debian have different goals than, than upstream. For example, in this case, for Debian is something important to have a background clean system and not for OpenSSL core team. Uh, in some case, the communication with upstream is not so good. Uh, in some case, upstream is dead. In some case, upstream is hostage. Uh, the problem is not so obvious, so it's not is not enough with uh, C patches. Uh, and of course, it's really impossible to audit all the code in Debian. It's, there is no way to do it by hand. And that we need to find an automatic way. So we are looking a way for do best software, not, to, not a way to complain people. That's something important. In, in many threads in the list, uh, we are looking for a way to, OK, we can do this. And if something goes wrong, we, we, have, we, we can get something to blame. We can get somebody to blame. And th that's not the point here. We, we need to find a way to make good software. So this is a summarize of some list, uh, uh, some threads in the Debian DBL list. Uh, I think the best issue here is improve the visibility. Uh, that was the, the main goal. So that's why uh, we are looking for a public BCS, version control systems. Uh, the new B3 format for our packages will, will be more evident, will make evident the, the divergences. Um, a way for a standard, the headers in the patches uh, will be uh, some, something to go in order to get a patches.debian.org. And another, another idea, I think, came from Shoyhes. Uh, it's managed the, the divergences 
as bugs. Uh, of course, the solution uh, uh, should be in the intersection of the sets, uh, the technical problem sets, the policy problems, and the social problem. If we combine all of that kind of solutions, we get the, the solution for the future for this kind of laws. So uh, I made a little, uh, some notes. I would like to emphasize uh, what we did well in this situation, uh, we give a really good tool in the, in, the, in, the, in the advisory moment to look for weak keys, and that was a really, a really good situation. Uh, the administrator have an easy way to check her keys, for example. The, the tool was not perfect, but works in most of the case. Uh, the, the maintainer uh, follows the good practice. He discussed the bug in the BTS, then he asked to the upstream, and they, he published the, the changes in a public BCS. Uh, but as some things that we need to improve, the package in this case has not a Debian dash package. Uh, for me, it was a really, something really difficult to find which line was the guilty of the problem. If uh, Debian patches exist, uh, for me, uh, have been more easy to find it. Uh, another problem is that there is only one maintainer uh, uh, in the practice way. I mean, uh, in theory, there are m many maintainers, but only uh, do the, the heavy job. Uh, the OpenSSL package has a request for help open from, uh, from many years, and it's still open. So that's something to know. Um, probably most of you didn't know about this, but when a uh, few years ago, a uh, few, uh, few days before the advisory, uh, the patch was uh, upload, uploaded to Sid, uh, fixing the problem. That was not something good because if somebody uh, founds that difference, can exploit the, the vulnerability before the advisory, uh, converting this problem in a zero day issue. So. So that's something good if we can find a change, a, a way to, to fix this too. So, about the, the, the tracking divergency as bugs, for me it's a wonderful idea. I mean, we have tagging in the BTS. We have a, a, an easy way to uh, forward uh, the bugs to the upstream. We have records in, uh, about which mail address uh, we send the, the, the divergency. We have a place to storage the debate if the patch have controversy. Uh, the, the, the patches the, uh, are not really critical uh, severity. The, 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 uh, uh, in, the, in the maximum case, mm -hmm. the, the, the divergency can be important. And with the, the old patches in the, in the BTS should be an easy way to create a patches.debian.org. Other ideas that I see in the mail are related with, um, we try to make a way to classify the packages uh, in order of importance. M many talks was about this, try this intent of classification I think it's really difficult because it's really difficult to find a criteria and the human effort is huge. Madoc, do you have a mic? Why Madoc have not a mic? Wow, you are fire. I don't have that much to say. No. Um, well, this is Joey Hess's idea, right? Tracking divergence from upstream as a bug, or maybe someone else has that, that yeah. idea as well. I just wanted to say that I think that's a gross hack because Divergence from upstream is not a bug. Yet the bug tracking system seems to be the tool that is well established in our workflow, so why don't we use it to also track well, the divergence? That, that we have many concepts. Uh, I mean, uh, a wish list is not a bug too. Right, right. Uh, and uh, I mean, an, a request for uh, adoption is not a bug in the sense of a mistake in a program. No, I agree. Um, and we we and use I BTS for many things. Right, but that's not necessarily something that is good. That is not necessarily something we should continue doing. That is not necessarily something that um, shouldn't be unchanged forever. I just look at this list, and all I can think is, 
version control system. And well, all I can think about then is VCS PKG, right? Because that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, and possibly even across distro. So maybe instead of, you know, let, let's not go down that alley even further. Let's not take our back tracking system and abuse it even further. Let's do this differently. Yeah, just to put the exact opposite task, our bug tracker <laughs> is not just a bug tracker. We call it a bug tracker because that's what most things in it are. But it's really an issue tracker. It does far, far more than just track bugs. Um, it's like a ticket system. I exactly. It's so it, while we call it bugs.devin.org, it's much, much more. You could, if it makes you feel better, you can replace everything. In fact, there is an option in the BTS right now to replace every instance of bug in it with issue. Because <laughs> um, people say, oh, God, this is not a bug. Um, so. Uh, 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 yes, indeed. Yes, you can replace it with feature as well. It's a global <laughs> value that you can set for your own instance of the BTS. Um, so th there's a lot of things that the BTS does for us automatically. Okay, so Maddox <laughs> is claiming that it's also not an issue, but I think it is. It's an issue that anytime we diverge from upstream, it's a case, and I made it in the thread that we, the huge thread that we had, uh, it's, it's something that eventually should be resolved. I mean, if we, if we, if we have the need to make a divergency, it's, it probably means in most of the case that something don't fix with us. I mean, maybe it's failure like a system or something like that, but uh, you, there's another people here, okay, Stefano here. Um, we need a mic here. I just wanted to say that uh, I don't... Who's talking? Oh, there. Yes, I'm Antoine from Kumbit. Um, I just want to say that I don't think it's really important uh, the, way we, the way we track divergence from upstream, whether it's the BTS or patches, the demo.org. I don't, I don't really care. I think what's really important is there's, there's some areas that are critical. The open SSL libraries, the compiler... Um, I don't know, the web browser, there are some really sensitive areas but, uh, in an operating system. And those, those sectors should be uh, specifically and targeted for peer review and security tracking. And this is one of the main issues this issue has brought up. And I think, uh, I think that people are going to watch OpenSSL in uh, distros much more uh, from now uh, in the security community. And I hope they will. So I hope that such uh, problems are going to be detected much earlier in the future. But I think we should. I think that Debian project should uh, take extra care now to ensure that those areas are specifically monitored for security issues. So you are in favor to make a subset of packages, like critical packages or something like that? Yes. So so you mentioned tagging, yeah. like uh, security. Yeah. So there should be a set of packages that are security critical that I, I, should be watched. Here I was talking about uh, security divergences. Uh, but right. I, uh, so I, I tried to make the exercise to, to, to generate the criteria of which packages are more important, and it's really hard. I mean, we have a similar problem a few years ago uh, related with cron. I, I don't know sure if you remember, but that's a root execution, and cron doesn't look like a security package. Yeah, sh sh uh, what I mean, uh, <laughs> what I try to say it is, okay, you include browsers, you include compilers. If you include so many sets, you, you will cover the 80% of the Debian packages. Uh, uh, it's my point of view, but uh, please, debacle or something else. I don't uh, know. Uh, uh, sorry, we have an issue here. Okay. No, not debacle. Okay, you. So I agree actually with Maddox position, and I find it interesting that during your talk, you're doing your introduction to this buff. Yeah, you said something sure. like, people say we should not patch. And you, uh, you actually even answered to that obje objection saying, this is what distribution are about. And this is true. And not all the changes we have are issue, bugs, sometimes are just meant to stay there in Debian with agreement with upstream. OK? So it, n given that not all of them need to be fixed, not all of them should be tracked in our bug tracking system or issue tracking system or whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, 
the, uh, in, in fact, we don't need to look for the upstream agree in all the case, many in some case upstream is there, uh, but it's if important if you, we put in a, in a single point of, uh, of looking in the web, so uh, maybe upstream doesn't look it, but another can look it. About having patches the BNR, yeah. and it's not a point about putting everything in the BTS because we a lot of time we just look for a place where to put stuff. We have the BTS, which is great, and we just want to use it. But I mean, it, you said something like, if we use the BTS, then it would be easy to create patches the BNR. But the goal is creating patches the BNR, not putting everything in the in, BTS. In a useful way. I mean, for example, patches Ubuntu uh, is just a file of index of, of yeah. patches. So we need a place where we can discuss if patches, I mean, really fix in the BTS. <laughs> but okay, let, let, let's continue the discussion, yeah. What I wanted to say is that you can't always um, apply the same rules on packages. So uh, I would agree with uh, you were listing for critical packages. But uh, if you wanted to apply to, let's say, OpenOffice.org, um, you at least would need to file 400 bucks. Because I'm not sure if I can understand you. If, if you want to apply those rules to all the packages in Debian, then you uh, would, would have packages which get 400 important bucks more. I know some packages. Sorry, <laughs> somebody can repeat me what he said? Yeah, well, well uh, if... You apply those rules you are outlined in the. Um, if you want to handle the versions from upstream as a bug, yeah. If you want to, want to handle every every patch as a bug, then you have some packages in Debian where you need to file four hundred bucks. And, and that's why this is better. The problem, I, I don't think this is a problem, because uh, there, there is a. Well, uh, for, for the package I meant, there was an unofficial version with the patches included, so I count this one as an upstream. But um, uh, what I mean is, I, I have, fil it, it, we it have filters. It doesn't scale for, for every package in Debian. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I'm from here. I think that it's important that to remember that we survived for 15 years without something like that. Sure. And we, I don't think that we need to change our, our workflows fundamentally. We just need to have to, to solve that problem in a lightweight way. Because if we want to file one bug for each divergence that you have from, because you can't just file it for important divergence, because that criteria that we won't find a criteria for important div divergence from up, for up, from upstream. You have to file a bug for each divergence if you want to do that. Yeah. And that's just a lot, a lot of work for not much, well, I mean, most of, the, most, of, most of the patch won't be interesting at all, and are just minor stuff. So you, we, we have to find a, sim a simple solution that is easy from the maintainer point of view, and that really solves the problems that we want to solve. And I think that the problem that we want to solve is not about security, it's about being good citizens in the free software community, exposing what we changed, what we improved in the package, mm -hmm. so that upstream can easily pick it up, because upstreams are looking for that, and w they really would like to have a simple way to see what every distro changes. And if in Debian, they have to look at, uh, in, at the BTS and go through all the bugs that we have uh, just to find the few ones that are about patches. It's, I don't think that Epsim will be happy about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's, uh, there's, there's uh, the idea of having some common website like VCS, PKG, or whatever else, where every distro um, can push their patches and people can, upstream can just look at it. I think that uh, some people in Ubuntu already started working on something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's enough with... No, it's not Launchpad, it's not Launchpad. <laughs> Actually, I think it's a clinical employee who did that, but on his free time. It's not an official project, I think. But maybe uh, George can clarify, I don't know if he's here. Um, well, but we, our part of the problem is uh, exposing our patches in an easy way, so uh, some, so a script elsewhere can pick them up easily, and I think that patches.debian.org would really uh, fit that criteria. 
And about the point of having a place for a discussion, if the patch fixes, fixes a bug, you can discuss the patch in the bug that, that, that was fixed. Mm -hmm. See, if, uh, if the patch, yeah, there's no need to open a different bug just to discuss the patch that was introduced. Because the patch fixi fixes, normally fixes something that was documented already. Okay, done. Uh, Stefan, I want to talk to yeah, no, um, I if I could <laughs> just interject, maybe what we need then is a combination of two approaches. One, we need to use bugs.debian.org for things that are bugs that we have fixed by divergence from upstream um, or specific patches. Because most of the cases that we're going to talk about, there's going to be a bug filed against bugs.debian.org about the actual issue. We will then go ahead, make whatever change is necessary to fix that bug. We will attach the patch that's fixed that bug specifically, perhaps using deb commit, tag that bug, divergence. It'll get closed in the normal fashion. Then a patches.debian.org website or something that somebody writes will go through, find bugs that are still tagged as diverging mm -hmm. from upstream. We'll pull them and along with any uh, specific patches that are not yet integrated upstream, perhaps automatically, perhaps by maintainers submitting when they do an upload or whatever that works. And so patches.debian.org becomes the union of the set of bugs that are in bugs.debian.org and divergences that are minor that weren't, that didn't necessitate a bug to bugs.debian.org. Um, I think it's important that whatever we do decide to do leverages the here I go into market ease, but uh, leverages the power of bugs.debian.org um, and to avoid duplicating work. Since maintainers have already discussed the bug there, the, in most cases, there's already the patch there, um, that all information should be uh, pulled in as well. Okay. Can I say some? <laughs> but it's low. Sorry. Um, uh, I, I, I feel like we may be looking at this the wrong way around. And it's very difficult to answer Don in this because I know how much time and effort you've been putting into bugs.debian.org. And I don't want to discredit this at all, but for some reason I have the feeling that we're doing this the wrong way around. Rather than trying to integrate version control systems with a bug tracker by having some sort of specially crafted commit messages that then go to the bug tracker, or even send the patches there, which are going to be just a linear series of patches. You won't be able to, to like diff between any two of the patches easily. I think we should look at tracking bugs in version control and integrate that way. Uh, that's that sort. Uh, if you remember this thread that Joey put up about like tracking um, upstream as a divergence from upstream, that was one of the points I made, and actually there was not very much that was responded in terms of it, but. I, I'd like to think about it in this way, and maybe you have something to say to that or someone else. Yeah, yeah. so there's a long-standing problem of dealing with uh, distributed bug tracking, which is really tied in with tracking bugs in VCSs. And unfortunately, that's still a problem that's unsolved. Um, so while I agree that perhaps it may not be optimal, and I know that our current system is not optimal, we at some point need to stand back and go for a system that is good enough to start with. Um, this is a problem that we have today, and we need to come to a solution uh, that at least starts to solve a set of the problems, even if it's not optimal. It's what we've got now, uh, so we should start using it to do the things that we can do. I mean, there's nothing stopping us now from creating a packages.debian.org that is at least semi-usable using the information that already exists in the BTS today without any extra work being done by anybody. So, I mean, while going forward, I would definitely look for people who are willing to spend the time to do something that's better. Um, as it stands now, this is what we've got. So, we, we, I mean, we can make it uh, do stuff useful just with the information today. Agreed. Uh, uh, probably first one, we need to uh, force our developers to make a Debian dash patches uh, and not a huge diff uh, or something like that. I mean, uh, the uh, in not all packages have an easy way to put patches in a in solid way and in in a good way, uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, on the mic, yeah. Even just deb commit or something would do that simply even for pack people who don't separate out their packages currently, because if you use deb commit, you can 
it knows which bug you fixed, uh, generates the change log, and it could easily be modified to also send the patch or something like okay, that. Cool. So uh, I mean, it's not like it's a big deal to just attach a patch. I, 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 I have looking for source of some packages where the commits are really messy, but uh, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, uh, it's a special it's a special package. I, I mean, continue. Maybe, maybe it's just something that we need to bring together more so that more yeah. people are aware that they should try to make patches as clean as possible. Yeah. Um. So it seems that the ideas spin around some rearrangement of the information. And while this will definitely help to identify potentially issues like that, I don't think it's getting us anywhere closer from to preventing them in the future, right? So what I think is would be a good idea, I mean, the obvious idea which I don't think sounded before is some kind of code review, right? It's, it's, it's horrible, it's hard, <laughs> and the, the usual way the, corpor the, the, the corporate world does code reviews will probably not work. However, I could easily imagine, so the, the idea sounded about identifying security critical packages, right? I would, for example, could imagine creating a new mailing list which would either act as some kind of technical peer reviewing body which maintainers could use of their own accord or in an extreme case that all the commits to the repositories of these security critical packages would just go to this list. The idea is just that I'm pretty sure there would be people who are interested in looking from the security point of view at all these commits and just having this more eyes look over it would actually have a better potential to prevent such issues. What we have at Debian Audit, uh, I think it's that, but we have it. I mean, have a web page. That is a web page for Debian Audit. Do you know about Debian Audit? I don't. <laughs> I only know the page. It's death, yeah. Uh, and that's because uh, there's not many people who want to see code uh, in the weekends. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 this, this kind of flow, the open SSL flow, uh, was a really series of, uh, of, ma of mistakes and was really something unlucky. Uh, if we want, if we, probably in the future will be really hard to get another one of these ones. Uh, if we only just, touch one of the part of that series of unfortunate events, uh, that's, I think that will be enough to, to, to try to prevent this kind of uh, problem in the future. Uh, audit code is, I mean, is inhuman. I mean, that's. Well, that's, that, that's why I'm saying that post-factum post -factum audit is hard, and it's hard to find people, but if you, if you, <coughs> get people to look through the commits as they come in and at least say, okay, I think it's fishy, I think you need to check more on this and things like that. There are people with different level of paranoia, you know, and yeah. in this case, I think it would be good if people would just raise red flags and it would be a little bit more work for maintainer and everybody to figure it out, but I think for a closed set of security critical pack packages, it would be really beneficial. But even even for do that, we need an easy way to discuss patch in a forum way. Uh, so that's what I'm, that's what, what we are looking for. Yeah, a mailing list? Sorry? A mailing list? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure it's the best way, but okay. Good idea. I so just wanna... It's working. I, I just wanna reinforce on what um, this guy was saying. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Someone was men I'm, I'm, I don't know his name, and I'm sorry. I'm Yuri. Um, hi. <laughs> Someone was mentioning that uh, we survived for 15 years and that we're basically okay. I, I don't agree with that. I think that uh, Debian took <coughs> a serious hit, a serious credibility hit with that vulnerability, and that affected the project as a whole. So, yeah, we survived, but I don't want to go through this ever again. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that nobody wants to do this ever again. So I do think we need to change the processes. And I'd say we, I'm not even part of the Demon Project. But anyways, I, I think the Demon Project needs to change those processes to make sure that this 
never happens again, or at least try to make it never happen again. So I think that the, the, the mailing list idea is a good idea. I think that isolating, if it's, re if it's necessary because there's too much information passing by, just isolate, I don't know, like SSL, SSH, and the kernel patches. Okay. Include the kernel on, now. On, <laughs> or on, on the mailing list. Well, I don't know, 10 packages, okay? How many like that critical packages are there like open uh, like open SSL, right? So yeah, millions um, maybe. <laughs> well, Thousands. I don't th I don't agree. So uh, I think there should be a mailing list out there that people are, sh are free to subscribe to that just lists all those those commits, all those patches that come through. We are that working are, that are with on Debian. We are working with a baby. Uh, I don't know Miriam, uh, trying to make few measures uh, numbers in order to get a way to score a package, uh, but it's, r it's really hard, but please join us, it's uh, really, really be careful, but sure, yeah, try to do that. But <laughs> regard, uh, regarding, really, uh, 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 so uh, I really uh, th think uh, that um, any program that takes any input that might be <laughs> uh, controlled uh, 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 by an interested person is security important. Uh, so, y I don't think identifying. Uh, I don't think that uh, identifying uh, uh, um, a subset uh, of uh, security important or security uh, critical pa packages will work. And uh, the other th thing uh, 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 that I wanted to, to say is that maybe a middle maybe a middle step uh, in the uh, direction uh, of uh, code uh, review is a certain kind of uh, team uh, maintenance. Uh, with a, a commits uh, a mailing list, so uh, I don't know uh, how many people uh, do, do that, uh, but, but but for a few o o of the teams uh, where I am, I do read the commits mailing list. Some weeks I'm too busy uh, and I don't read uh, everything in it, but I try to get a view uh, of of every commit that happens to the packages of the team that I'm interested in. Uh, and yes, sometimes I just see a bug and I correct it like that. So uh, uh, if one team th that looks at all commits of all security critical packages uh, won't work, maybe team maintenance of packages will be a middle step that might work uh, with reading the commits by other m members. Let's go back to him in order to finish this uh, classification uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, you, you want to say something about classification of packages? I, I mean, just for finish the issue. No, uh, for finishing this issue, oh. he was he was mentioning. I think it's uh, well, it's important not to not not to think of, as a package as uh, security related. Uh, I, I mean, like opposing to what uh, you just said. Most patches are uh, well. You you cannot see. Uh, you you cannot just uh, from looking at the at the patch you do not see the context. I mean, I if you look at the at uh, at the patch in question that uh, was found there, you wouldn't uh, understand just from l looking at a few lines it was uh, removing an important call. In fact, if it were so obvious, it, it wouldn't have been in in the first time, in the first uh, place. So, well, just uh, sending them to a mailing list would make no, no, no sense because the, the people who are following the list may just see yet another patch, yet another patch, and uh, not, uh, not even try to understand each of them. Uh, while if uh, we're doing some kind of audit, be it security-minded or be it any other thing, having each uh, patch set as an issue, as, a, as something that uh, stands out somehow, either as a bug or as a feature or as an issue or as a whatever, or, uh, can bring more attention to the QA question. I'd like to. Well, um, I just want to add to be that shorter. I'll, I'll, I'll in our speeches, let's try to be shorter because. Okay, I just I just want to say that um, I disagree that all co all code can't be audited. Uh, other projects are actively uh, monitoring all code they put in. Yeah, open the OpenBSD BSD project is auditing everything. The FreeBSD project. Uh, has a mailing we list where all the distribution in the world. For I'm just <laughs> let me finish. OpenBSD is monitoring all the core 
uh, and uh, actively auditing all the core. The FreeBSD project has a mailing list where all the commits to the core and also to the port system are sent to. So there are more eyeballs on that code than on the Debian patches. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not saying they audit all the port system and that it's, it's, it's flawless, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that right now there is no place where there is all those patches coming in. When there's a new patch on OpenSSL, you can be sure as hell that people are gonna look at it now. Even if it looks like irrelevant, a little common thing, people are gonna look at it now. And if there is no place to take a look at all those patches that come into Debian, then I think it's a problem. Okay, so I Madok, I just can. Can you hear me? Yeah, Is I loud enough. All right, I've just heard a couple of things in the last ten minutes. One of them was that we've been going fine for the last fifteen years, but we've also never been as big as we are currently in the fifteen years. And if you define success correctly, then we're going to grow, right? So we need to be able to scale. Also, um, we can't really be compared to another project per se like FreeBSD because we're bigger. We don't have enough eyeballs to actually look at all of this. So, and then there were two other things that I heard, which was let's create two classes of packages. One of them being the security critical ones and one of them being the less security critical ones. And for the security critical ones, hey, let's push all the patches out to a common place. And you know, as long as everybody is reading and we're not on vacation and we actually care, we will find every single bug. I think that's completely the wrong way. I agree that we should never have something like the OpenSSL debacle ever again, but if we actually, if we decide that this is something we need to guard against, then the only way to do that is not post-mortem, but pre-mortem. We need to be working um, in advance, and we need to be approving rather than checking patches. And that there's actually a, something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time, which is something that I call upload certificates. Um, these upload certificates are basically certain checks that you have to run, which uh, are defined for each package. So you could have a, a larger number of checks for libc or OpenSSL than you could have for like a small package that nobody uses. Um, but these would include things like Lincian. Have I built it from source? Have three Debian developers looked at it? Has this gone through a uh, security audit and this kind of stuff? And unless this certificate is issued, the reason why I haven't done it is because I don't know how to cryptographically do it properly. Um, unless these things are done and all the certificates have been issued for this package, it's just not going to get uploaded, period. Or maybe even the patch doesn't make it into the version control system. And now if you look at any company that does a lot of software engineering and that uses uh, uh, version control in their uh, workflows in a, in a professional way, then you will see that every single commit has to be approved by other people. Perforce is a, is a very good example of that. It has all of that built in, but that's what companies like Google and Microsoft and so on, they all do exactly that. The commits are approved before they go into the code base, and the code base is therefore guaranteed to be cleaner. So I think so we need to do something before, we're not we're after. We're about an, an automatic uh, way to check uh, patches or check divergency or check uh, new uploads, an automatic way. Check, check the stuff that makes the upload happen. Check the stuff that comes in the components of the upload. Don't check the upload after it happened. It's yeah. just like your example yesterday from the SSL package. It's like commit, send all my payment details, and then come back and say, oh, oops, the certificate is wrong. No, that's too late. You know, you want to have it done before. Sure, but but the 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 the, the most major flaws are not so easy to check. Uh, I mean, we we need uh, humans for do that. Of packs, and this is a really huge effort. Um, I think, <coughs> yeah, Holger, please. Uh, what a minute, yeah, Holger. I think Martin is right that we need to do more checks before um, allowing the package in, but I think that it will never prevent um, errors. There will always be um, flaws which will be not be detected by audits. And I think um, we should limit the security support to a subset of packages in Debian, not to only security related packages, but also. KDE and GNOME, which will never be audited completely, um, so that we maybe only support three or 5,000 packages for security support so that the security team can cope with the existing um, issues. T there are still many, many issues in testing and stable which are not fixed, and I think we should need also need to do this. So I'm, I'm in favor of limiting this, the security support scope. 
It's not a bad idea. I mean, uh, the, the most of the problems are related with our huge archive. Uh, I mean, many distribution does things like that one. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. One of the problems too, though, with stopping stuff before uploading. I think it's not. It's it's, it's working. The make. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it is. One of the problems with requiring that much documentation, though, is s purely scaling, as Holger was talking about. Um, I mean, big companies like that are maybe releasing uh, one product or two products in a team, whereas we have uh, already so many RC bugs that we have a hard time scaling to the number of packages that we have. Um, even for security critical packages, the number of people that you'd have to pull in before an upload that would require that type of checking I mean, it would be prohibitive. I, I can't imagine us. I mean, I, I would be really happy if it were to happen, but I can't imagine us scaling to that. I mean, perhaps before investing too much work, should try for a couple of packages to do this, um, because I, I'm, I almost guarantee that it's not going to work after you know a month. Uh, so, just sort of to you know give it a try run before even really bothering to talk about it much more. Another comment. We have time, I mean, you can be short, but please go on. Yeah, so I also have my doubts that such pre-checks will work. So my idea about checking the commits to SVN, kind of, the idea is that it will preclude packages going into the archive, but I think that the co common corporate scheme will just not work because, you know, in corporate scheme, you can tell people, first of all, you have a few people working on a project, the ones which do code reviews, and then you can tell people, you know, do code reviews or you are fired. And uh, not that it happens. Um, but uh, in Debian, it, it just will not work. It, it, people, people will, you know, the more barriers you set is the less motivated the maintainers will be and things like that. Two, I also would like to comment on everybody saying, you know, it will not work or it's too complicated or mailing list will be inefficient, you know, something is better than nothing. Yeah, sure. And so we, so we that's what it boils down to. Yeah, yeah, sure. we, can, we can kind of say bad things about all these proposals, but they are actually trying to achieve something, and we can try things and see if they work out or not, and work from there. Is this on again? Sure. Yeah. Um, to, to what Don was saying earlier, well, I was comparing us to companies, and he was saying, well, these companies have dedicated teams to do releases and release only every now and then. I, I have that feeling that we're maybe in Debian trying to do two different things, right? We're trying to push out new versions of our software at regular intervals. And at the same time, we're trying to harvest the power of a volunteer team to produce secure software. Now, I think we have to choose either one of those. I don't think that saying we can't get this done because we are only volunteers and because we are on a tight time schedule is going to help us anything. So it's either doing what OpenBSD does, which is basically to secure first, release afterwards, or it's release every 18 months and, uh, and try to, to do our best. But if we try to do our best, we will have a problem like this again. It's human. It happens. With the maker, sorry. Ten, let's meet. We're going to have a problem like that again, no matter what we do. Um, even if we do have the most rigorous code checking in the world, problems like this are going to happen. It's the nature of human written software. In fact, it's probably the nature of all software. So. Um, uh, Mozilla uh, is a fairly large uh, uh, project that I think nowadays uh, has mostly uh, volunteers, and they have code review and a uh, super uh, review. On the other hand, uh, when I f f file a bug uh, uh, in Mozilla Upstream, usually uh, it rots for a few years, but... That's probably because it didn't pass the review. That's probably because? It didn't pass the review. <laughs> Here, uh, just a new topic which have been neglected thus far, which is uh, patch documentation. <laughs> so basically, in the open shell case, it was just the patch was just in the big diff gz, right? It's not in, it yeah. was not in the yeah. patches. Yeah. So this is something which should be 
label as bad, as bad practice in all our packages. And on that side, I feel uh, relatively safe with the new DPKG versus three package format because as far as I understand, it will be impossible to directly change stuff to the package without having something in Debian patches, right? Uh, uh, that, that's what I answered too. I am not okay. an expert, I guess. So that's the first point, but this still does not enforce having documentation in all patches, and I think that uh, just after Lintian started bothering about the Debian patches uh, which were not documented, people started documenting them. So this is something which we should push more. So just saying, if you have a patches in Debian patches, which will become mandatory from DPKG versus 3, then you should document it with the two lines explaining what that patch does. So this is another point. And okay, let's see. That was I, I, I was listening about the new version f uh, f uh, from many time ago. Uh, um, uh, I, I agree with the new the new B3 version. With this will be easier to do. But what about what about make Debian patches now? Uh, what what Dan says we we need to to make something now. I mean what many packages use these kind of things and diff huge diff and uh, try to enforce them. To, to migrate to a Debian patches uh, well, right now? Debian, has, uh, Debian always has a bit of inertia. So <laughs> having DPKG versus 3 meant to be Lenny plus 1 is, <laughs> I think, as quick as we can get. Okay. But uh, another comment I forgot to mention was about code review. I frankly don't believe too much in code review, but <laughs> it is interesting that right now we have no way, no centralized place where we can monitor all our commit messages. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if people want to do that, we right now we are making really hard to do that. <laughs> Tell so me. it will be interesting to find out a way where we can just f join together all the stream of commits we have so people can look at it. I will never subscribe to that mailing list, but it would be interesting to have. Yeah, um, one uh, thing, um, I think it's really important that we uh, separate patches that we have comments. Well, uh, of what the patch does. What uh, thing we can take from the kernel is have the signed off by um, of every patch so you can see who created it, uh, what was done. Um, I think it's also really good practice to also, even if you don't want the upstream to have your patch, to at least talk to them to say, hey look, this is what we're doing, what you think about it, which in that case was what was done. But uh, then you can have and see tracking and it's it's not to blame it's just to see You know for yourself what have been done and then checks like uh, Matt Duck was suggesting are really easy You just look for two sign of buys when uh, you get a package in and you know that somebody has looked at it Like whether it's the upstream or, or anyone and yeah. so. I'm not I'm not sure sign of buy really applies to Debian it works for the kernel and It's required for the kernel because they don't have change logs, but we do um, and I think you should already document everything in the change log anyway. So adding signs of by isn't really going to add much there, I think. Well, that's a bug then. Yeah, so you're saying that there's no way to, to cross-reference the patch with the, the change log, but I think that's a bug then. Uh, it should be there in the change log. Um, the change log should explain what was changed, so if you add a patch and you don't document that patch in the change log, you're doing something you should be doing. Uh, uh, in, in, in most of the uh, solutions, we need to make a huge effort in the beginning, but with an unstable situation, that that's not to be more something something really hard. I mean, the we have a lot of patches now, but if we document all our patches now, then the, the line will be stable. I mean. Uh, that has nothing to do with the huge big effort in the beginning. Another comment? So just like summarizing, uh, looks like we need a, a place to, to put our patches in a unique way. Uh, I, I am not sure if you are agree with this BTS divergency issue. Uh, of course, needs more discussion. In many, qu in many cases, the discussion in the mailing list uh, are endless and uh, that it's for me. I have a problem with Debian Devel. I don't know. N nothing ends in a practical way. But uh, sorry, you have Debian it. It's okay. Sorry. Maybe you could do a quick poll in this room about the divergence from upstream as a bug. But it's difficult to see if. Uh, the people thinking that it's a good idea are a majority or a minority? 
Actually, if I I'm not sure if I understand you, but you, you want to do a quick poll in this room ask with Paul. Paul, yeah, just ask. Uh, who oh, a boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just a vote. Do you think? Okay. Just a poll to have an idea. Hands up to track a divergence like a bug. Whoa. Ups, uh, hands up for don't try a divergence like a bug. Hands up for tracking divergence like patches. Uh, yeah. Well. Hello. Uh, so, what's your proposal? <laughs> Hello. I just wanted to say that Mad Martin was saying the, um, hands up for tracking it with a package C SVN or CVS. No, v VCS. That's VCS. The thing. Anything like that. Just track changes. Anything like that. Track a diversion as a patch. Manage the patch itself, which is the diversion, and don't keep it stored somewhere which, as a bug. But that, that was what I uh, was going to say before, that um, currently there is no Lintian warning if um, the files are modified outside Debian are modified without a patch steer. I think this is tracking with the, is the Lintian warning. What else do you want? A Lintian, to errors, have one Lintian error, sorry. To have one place where these patches are accessible and not necessarily one place only like patches.debian.org, which is a great idea, but it might be difficult to pull in those patches, especially if you want to track patches, if you want to have a commit ID, but have a way in which it is easy for everyone, upstream, other distros, ourselves, our QA, and our security team to get at patches and look at them. So a standard way of accessing them. But yeah, that, that's the way to put the patches into De in the Debian patches. Then you can, cr then you can, Ronda. You don't have a microphone. Rhonda, please. The just question was from, from Rhonda whether that doesn't just mean that I want an RSS feed for patches.debian.org. And um, I don't because you will possibly have a patch that is false, that is wrong. So there your RSS feed goes out to everyone and the patch, uh, people look at it. And the next day you decide, oh, there was actually a typo in there, so I'm going to change it. Now, you, what, what are you going to do on, on patches.debian.org? Debian.org, are you going to have a new patch that has all the old changes? It's basically between the new tip and the, the, the master. Or are you going to have an additional patch that, um, that describes only the changes you made since yesterday? And once you have that, um, are you still going to be able to have one location where you can find the current, most up-to-date patch that applies and then possibly be able to look at the history of this patch? I mean, this is, it, it seems to me that what we're trying to do is exactly that. It's changing, it's tracking patches. But um, if there's this Lintian warning, we have the cent uh, error, we have the central place to look them up, Lintian, Debian, org, and then you can see in the packages that they, which VZS they use, and you see the patches, and for each upload where you change the patches, you change the VCS thing. So and it currently it doesn't. There's even not. Uh, I'm not sure if there's even a recom recommendation to use VCS for packaging, an official recommendation. So this is the next step to to do that. And I don't see what you really want in the end. This why why patches Debian org is not enough if that is created every day from SID. What I found from Maroc is uh, the problem uh, about. A patches over patches when you want to patch a patch or something like that. I mean that in that case yeah. the, 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 the the patch as a bug doesn't work and it looks like yeah <laughs> fix me. Yeah. The the way that I think patches.debian.org could work, um, because I do think it's a good idea, it's a single point of entry, don't get me wrong. But it should actually delegate to the information in the version control system or to some sort of unpacked Debian patches directory for all the the Debian packages that don't use a version control system. All, all I want, I, I don't want patches.debian.org to be a dump of patches or to be a mailing list exploder or RSS feed generator that just dumps patches. It needs to be a way for you to get patches and to analyze patches and to analyze their history and to look at basically what the version control systems do. So patches.debian.org is what we feed out to everyone. Every upstream, every other distribution knows patches.debian.org slash MUT is where I can get all the patches that Debian has applied to MUT. The question is how is the back end then organized? And all I'm saying is let's do that proper rather than 
then patches dot some other distribution dot com. But that will not work. Not every maintainer will want to use some central version control system. They will be spread around. And the the best we have is that the PTS shows which we see we, which we see as as a use. Would you make it, please? You don't need it. It's really easy to work out the difference between a patch of between two uploads. It's really easy to uh, do that. That's easy, but you still need you still need to have the two versions. So we 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 need snapshot the domain at all yeah. to things like that, and we we have them basically. I, I think, but maybe the the, the BCS the BS the BCS uh, approach, it's probably m more uh, more abarcative, but it's more complex. I can be and can't be applied at now. Uh, in in the BTS way, we can start tomorrow. Uh, we need to generate the way to to create the BCS way to manage our patch instead of just upload it to the BTS. Yeah, or you can take all your patches and put them into a VCS and uh, make patches.debian.org that VCS exported. So then you have tracking, you have everything you need. Okay. Time's up. Sorry, good. Time's up. Okay.